Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. Welcome to the Tuesday point and shoot update for October the 2nd, 2018. You'll notice right away that I've done something with my lighting profile so that I can make the tank more white for filming. A lot of you have commented that it's really blue and I agree it is blue, but I like it. <laughs> However, for filming, it is much better to have it white because you can see more detail. And this is what I'll try to remember to use from now on when I do these updates. So let me know what you think. So to start with, the carnage from my alkalinity instability. Well, I have 26 sticks in here, 26 Acropora. I'm not including any of the Montipora, just the Acropora. And I have really lost 12 for sure, they're done. And about another three maybe on their way out. So let's take a closer look. I do apologize for reflections, it's really bright. So right here you can see the two at the top are done. The two at the bottom are looking okay. They haven't lost tissue. That one there might survive. The digitata I think is done. The clown goby is in one of my favorite Acropora and it is really questionable whether this thing is gonna survive. It was sold to me as a frog skin. I don't think it is. I think it's some sort of a tort. And we come down here and here's where I'm getting optimistic because check it out, there's green on this thing now. Where before it was all brown, now we're seeing green coming back. So that's a good sign. My alkalinity has stabilized at around eight and that's really where I do want it. So if we come across here, just a couple more examples, that millipora may be done. This one is losing tissue where it's based out, but the actual stick itself where the branches are is okay. These ones up here are done, and unfortunately that was the strawberry shortcake. Sad to say. And the setosa here, I lost half of it, the back half. It's hanging on, so I'm going to trim off the dead part and see how things go. So really, the Montiporas, the plating Montes are hanging in there. There's a lot of white on here, but I think overall it should come back. The color has really been affected by what's going on in here. This one in the middle that used to be all bright neon green still has bright green polyps. The skin has turned brown and I'm optimistic that will come back. When we go over to the other types of encrusting Montes, this is the Divine Mystic Sunset. It's not too bad, very brown, but the polyps are blue. We come down to the other one I have down here, and you can see the polyps are still blue, and it's still got that gray crap on it. I don't know what that is. So that's pretty much the extent of the carnage. Everything else that was affected, I believe will come back. The Octospawn, for example. They really had a tough time, but they're starting to put out their regular tentacles. So that's a really good sign. The Corky Sea Finger has never really opened up more than this for about the last two weeks. It used to be full and fluffy. This one right here that's all bare was against the jack-o'-lantern, Leptoceros, for a couple of days and I didn't notice it. One of the snails had moved this thing and it was rotated so that that section that's bare was pushed right up against the rocks at the back and right against the Leptoceros. So I think the Leptoceros <laughs> fought it off. And you can see more, another dead Acropora. So let's go around to the side of the tank. This bird's nest was really bad, but you can see it is coming back. It is getting polyps. However, the lower section has completely died off now. It had tissue for a long time, but during this alk problem, that died right back. I don't know whether I can reach in there and get that off without wrecking it, so I might just leave that alone. Pasolipora is coming out again, so that's good. The color is actually greening up. And the war coral. The war coral got really dark, but I'm confident that it will come back to its bright red coloration. And check out 
all of the excavating that's done on this side of the tank with the aurora gobies and the pistol shrimp, it's pretty crazy. So coming around the front here, the hammer coral is coming back. It hasn't got its full color yet. It was bright green with purple tips, but at least the polyps are extending, so that's awesome. And we go up here and everything else is looking not bad. Even going to the back here, the hairy mushroom is looking good. And the Monty at the top, the acans, that in the center there is another starburst Monty that's having a rough time. It was getting stung. You can barely see my mycetium. It's behind the dunk in there, you can kind of see it. It really got roasted with the alkalinity problem, so I'm hoping that that uh, cuts it back so it doesn't sting everything. The Yuma is having a baby right in the middle of there. You can see how it's dropped a new one. It's pretty wobbly in that spot and I'm a little concerned that it's going to go for a walk, but I'll just have to see. Duncan looking good. The Scoli is looking a bit weird. It's got strange dents in its skirt. I don't know what's happening with it. The Devil's Eye Chalice looks good. I have not touched anything under here. Whatever changes happen in this little cave are because of the pistol shrimp and the gobies. And once in a while I try to blow the sand off the brain coral, but I'm really trying not to disturb it too much and just let whatever happens happen. That shell is full of sand. It's up against the brain coral, but it's not uh, really touching it. So you can see that things are not bad. We had some carnage down here. The red digitata is completely toast, I think. This is the red planet. I don't know. And this one didn't lose much tissue. This one did. George, George is doing his best to come back, but I don't know. We'll have to wait and see on him. And Stanley, Stanley the Clam, he is just looking great. I think the high alkalinity was something he probably enjoyed a lot. So overall, I think it could have been a lot worse than it actually ended up being. And I guess I'll just have to wait and see. The candy canes are just looking beautiful. I have never seen them look this good ever. The goniastria is coming back. It lost a lot of color and looked deflated for a long time. And you can see my zoanthids are actually looking like they're growing. The pectinia is another kind of casualty, but not really. I'm optimistic the yellow will come back. There are tiny spots of yellow, like you can see right there. So the eyes generally are yellow and I'll just have to wait and see with that one as well. The marble favia looks like it's growing. The plaited gyra, I don't know. I still don't know what to think about that one. When we get to the rhodactus, the citrus rhodactus is two. There are two on here now and the one to the left that one there, I hope is moving onto the rock because that would be great. Can you imagine a beautiful arch of citrus rhodactus through here? That would be gorgeous. Goniopora. The one on the right really is struggling. I'm thinking maybe light is an issue, especially because I have the frag rack right above it. The one on the left seems to be opening every day. So again, the jury's out. We come over to here. The Sunny D's still growing. Looney Tunes Cyphastria still spreading out, looking good. Come around the corner. This Leptoceros got really dark brown and it was like that for several days. And now all of a sudden in the last two days, the color's back. So I'm really pleased about that. 
And the toadstool has finally finished its shedding, but look, huge hole in it. It has not dropped any pieces. So hopefully that's going to be okay once it opens up again. I don't know, I'm not sure what to think about that. There's a candy cane. The red gorgonian does open up every night. And that bullseye rhodactus is looking good. Now one thing, I believe I might have accidentally spread these purple mushrooms of death all over my tank because right up here they were stinging my green rhodactus. Now you can see he is all curled up and right in that rock hollow there there's a big one and it was actually touching that that green right there that's trying to open up. So I got my curved tweezers in there and I scraped and I scraped and I scraped and of course little bits went all over the place and floated away in the flow before I could get them. So I'm going to have to keep a very close eye and see what happens because with my luck it's going to end up all over the tank. And they do sting and they do overcome everything. And they're just mushrooms. Discosoma. They're not even Rhodactus. And I had always thought Rhodactus would win a fight. Yeah, these things are going crazy back here. And the chalice. Doing well. Bounced right back. So let's finish off with optimism. Optimism is me cashing in my livestock credit for a Jason Fox Fox Flame Acro. And if you've watched my last two videos, <laughs> you know how optimistic that is because of the carnage that I've had in the SPS in here. And of course, have I got you anything else on the frag rack? Oh no, of course not. I have the time. I am still dithering about actually going ahead and getting them mounted. I know now where I'm going to put them. So it's just a matter of me getting my act together and actually doing it. So that's going to be this week's project, is to force myself to get those things off the rack, into the tank properly, and get this rack out of here. So I'll leave you with a close-up of the Jason Fox Fox Flame. And let's hope, oh and the party crasher is getting really good color too. So let's hope I don't kill that one. So there we are, Tuesday update for October the 2nd, 2018. Thanks so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. And let me know what you think of the lighting. Hey.